Heparins are used extensively in the hospitals as anticoagulants for a variety of conditions. There are three main types, naturally occurring heparins, unfractionated heparins, and low molecular weight heparins. Naturally occurring heparins are glycosaminoglycans and are large molecules between 3 and 50,000 deltans. They are made by mast cells and basophils in the body. Unfractionated heparins are synthetic products that bind and potentiate antithrombin-3 nearly 1,000 fold. Activated antithrombin-3 inhibits thrombin and therefore inhibits clotting. We'll look at this pathway in a minute. Low molecular weight heparins like anoxaparin are synthetic molecules that are relatively new. They directly inhibit factor 10A and are much smaller molecules at around 2,000 to 8,000 daltons and therefore they are unable to potentiate antithrombin-3 or bind thrombin like unfractionated heparin can. The clotting cascade occurs in the body in response to an activating stimulus. We'll not explore it right now in this video, but rather focus on the final common pathway used by these anticoagulants. The clotting cascade converts factor 10 to 10A, which then catalyzes the chains of prothrombin to thrombin. Thrombin then catalyzes a process of fibrinogen to fibrin, which causes a clot. As we have said, this is called the final common pathway. So activated antithrombin-3 inhibits thrombin, which therefore stops this fibrin clot from being formed. It's activated by unfractionated heparin and heparin. Low molecular weight heparins will act directly on 10A and stop this clotting process earlier in the pathway. And this is how they both work. APTT or activated prothrombin time is the best way of monitoring unfractionated heparin. APTT reflects the action of intrinsic factors 8, 9, 11 and 12, but is still prolonged by heparin as it inhibits the activation of prothrombin. Alas, it is not prolonged by low molecular weight heparins as they act earlier in the pathway on factor 10A. You don't usually need to monitor low molecular weight heparins like anoxaparin, but should the needs arise, you can perform a factor 10A level. We might see some change in APTT with the use of low molecular weight heparins, but not enough to clinically correlate it. Heparins can be used to treat DVT, PE, in cardiopulmonary bypass operations, in extracorporeal membrane oxygenation or ECMO, renal replacement therapy in ICU, and when inserting stents. Unfractionated heparin has a really short half-life of one hour, which makes it an excellent choice. If bleeding becomes apparent, you can stop it. Low molecular weight heparins are utilised as subcutaneous injections, often twice daily for the prophylaxis of DVT or PE. It can also be used in acute coronary syndromes and for the treatment of the DVT or PE, and these are usually at higher doses. Check your local policies for the regimes and doses preferred by your hospital, as they can change quite significantly depending on where you are. Unfractionated heparin is given as an IV infusion. Side effects can of course be serious with heparins. The first thing I should mention is that there's always an obvious potential for allergic reaction with any drug. You should decrease the dose in renal failure and check with the BNF or local formulary advices for this. Hemorrhage is another obvious consideration as a side effect. It is important to know that the very positively charged molecule protamine sulfate will reduce the action of the negatively charged heparin by binding it and enabling its elimination. One milligram of protamine will reverse 100 international units of heparin. Non-immune thrombocytopenia is a common occurrence and is self-limiting. It normally occurs after four days of therapy with spontaneous recovery seen even if the unfractionated heparin is not stopped. In contrast, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia is very serious and usually occurs after five days of therapy, although previous heparin exposure can accelerate this course. It is an immune-mediated process where IgG antibodies are formed against the heparin and platelet factor 4 complex that exists when heparin is used. These antibodies bind platelets and activate them, causing thrombi to develop and propagate. Decrease your serum platelet count and have a potential to cause fatal PEs, DVTs, limb ischemia and even stroke. It can also cause bleeding as it uses up your platelets and causes a coagulopathy. Milder side effects of heparin include hypotension and osteoporosis with prolonged use. It has even been known to cause alopecia. 
low molecular weight heparins are less likely to cause HIT than unfractionated heparins, although they still can.